Welcome to the Global Author Podcast. I'm Matt Connor Whiteley, science fiction, fantasy, and a global author, bringing you publishing, writing, book marketing, and a global author ideas for your book to help you sell more books and write better books. For more information and your free global author training, please go to theglobalauthor.com. And here's the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 56 of the Global Author Podcast with me, Connor Wiley. And today's episode is on the need for flexibility in a business. And wow, is today's episode applicable to me and my life? And yeah, definitely. I think this is so important, today's episode, and I cannot recommend this enough. So if you do anything today, please just listen to this. Skip the personality. Just listen to this content, please. It's really, really important. And it's Friday the 16th of July 2021 as I record this. So before we move on to the content part of today's episode, I want to give you a quick, well, a quick personal update. So this week I've been doing like a lot of like different um, bits and pieces. For example, I started a new novella, so that's Heart of Fate. It's a brand new book in the Fireheart Fantasy series, but it's also the last book. So I'm really enjoying that. I got to the stage where I'm really in the story now, so I really want to just like knock it out and just do it because I'm really into the story but I have got some other business stuff like to do but for example like fulfilling the kickstarter which won't take like that long I spent an hour the other night doing it and I'm already like I'm halfway done for like fulfilling the reward so I'm really glad with that and then I'm also been doing some coke psychology research I'm not sure if I told you but I am planning to adapt that book for writer's dice and just like putting into my writer's tips in there about how to write realistic coats, uh, cool coats so that I'm really, really interested in and looking forward to that. And lots of other life stuff has I've been going on. For example, me and my family are we like self isolating because my brother's tested the positive. So I, that's all I'm like, gonna say on that and everything. Like, should that be fine though? Well, because we're doing tests like every other day. Oh, and then uh, the only other thing that I wanted to say though is. Uh, Writers who work a full-time job, I completely understand their pain and their frustration now because I found out um, yesterday, well, no, actually, but like the entire reason for the podcast episode today was because the Business Masterclass by Dina Wesley Smith and Kristen Catherine Rush started, well, started though, and the first class or the first lesson in it was in flexibility of a business, so I thought I would do this a podcast episode on it, but like, in inspired by that um, pop up <laughs> because in uh, September I uh, yeah we're well, like I'll be doing my university psychology placement to so doing my like, um, psychology research in uh, to depression. So what happens there though is that I'll uh, basically I'll be doing a, a full time my job. So last night I found out my results and I found out that I, that I had passed. I was like, going to yes yeah, so I will be doing my placement. I wasn't meant to find out till Monday. So what happened there was was that I had to do. Uh, Tons of like business, uh, well, business planning. I spent an hour doing like business planning, making sure that I have enough books, and I sort of like just like showing it to myself that uh, yes, I can't. Your writing time will be decreased, but you're gonna be fine. This is after one year. You're not going to lose readers, uh, well, readers, and I think so. I think should I be fine that by so just uh, yes, yeah, so just like calm down. Yeah, so that was fine though. So I managed to yeah, but I didn't realise this, but if I keep Yes, yeah, so like before September, I want to finish some projects, including uh, doing some box sets. Yeah, but by January, I should have like eighteen more products. Uh, well, eighteen or more book of products I release. So I'm more than happy with that. So I definitely do need to like relax about it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that I'm more than like happy with. And then when it comes to the podcast, I really will just like, be doing like tons of like scheduling though. But more than that in uh, today's episode because the pod yeah because the actual blog I post for today's episode. That I wrote on Tuesday, so about three days before, well, yeah, but like um, two days before I found out my results. So you'll sort of see some virtual outro thinking, and then you'll also see today's current thinking. So, as always, I always love to know your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. So you can always email me, Connor Whiteley, Connor Whiteley Donner. You can always leave a comment at the show notes at theglobalauthor.com forward slash podcast. And you can always tweet me on Twitter at theglobalauthor. I always love to hear from you. And today's episode has been sponsored by Turn Your Ideas In To Money, a guide to making money with your writing. So but this is an absolutely brilliant book that goes into so many different ways how you can make money with your books, including like book ones, I thought, for example, like libraries, 
use audiobooks, um, ebooks, print books, and all the different types of, of a print books. So, so it goes into some of like great data, but then it also goes into non book related income streams that we have, like, for example, speaking, consulting, or well, offer services. So there are so many great tips and there's so many great ideas from this so great book. So I really do recommend it. And it's all written in easy to understand way. So I really do recommend it. So that is. Uh, Turn Your Ideas Into Money, A Guide to Making Money with Your Fighting. Available on all major ebook retailers and you work and you can order the payback and the payback and the hardback versions from Amazon, your local bookstore, or your local library if you re request it. And if you want to buy the ebook directly from me, then please go to payhip.com for slash Connor Whiteley. So with that's enough for personal update. Let's move on to the content part of today's episode. So we're moving on to the content part of today's episode. So we're going to be talking about why is flexibility needed in the author business. So this is a great episode and very, very applicable because, as we know, the publishing industry is constantly changing and we are author businesses and we need to change it too. Or sadly, we will fail. There's simply no doubt about that. And our businesses and our writing will fail with too. So this is why it's really important. So why is flexibility needed in the author business? One of the main things about the publishing industry is that it's always changing. And that's one of my favourite things about it. If the publishing industry wasn't changing, I would probably get quite bored of it. But each year, new tools and techniques get developed and which are made available to us. So uh, we can uh, use these in our author business. And these are amazing. These tools are really, really great. But the changes can be negative too. For example, as Dean Obersey Smith pointed out, for example, when the first go of a war got televised, book sales had dropped off. So change needed to happen. He didn't change it. And also though, just for the young audience here, the first go of war, don't feel bad if you don't know too much about it. I definitely don't. You'll probably find the UK was involved in it, but I'm not sure how. <laughs> how, but it was only, I don't know, I think it was only last year or the year before that I actually knew that they were talking about the Persian Gulf and not the Gulf of Mexico. And that's and that is embarrassing that I've as admitted that. I just really hope that I've not got it wrong now. <laughs> Any other way though. So authors and their business need to be flexible to take advantage of new opportunities and to avoid destruction when negative changes occur. And I think this is also really, really applicable because of course uh, we've had the pandemic. Yes, and like and now we're entering into the proper, I guess you could say yeah, though, but the proper economic um, fallout because of the pandemic. So the first tip is to be flexible in how you do things. So this point is absolutely critical because if all of us don't take advantage of our new methods, distributors and our software, then bad things can happen. For example, I used to pay for all of my covers because I thought that was the only way to do it. But then when I saw how much money it would cost to do all of the covers I needed for all of my future products, I showed flexibility by learning how to design a professional covers that professional covers are myself though so I'm really pleased about that and I promise you this if I hadn't shown flexibility and if I had stayed with how I used to do it I can really tell you now I would be nowhere near as prolific as I am I would simply not especially when it comes to fiction because it would just cost too much and so another I guess I'm poor is though is that a loss of authors like authors like used to pay for a formality for their book and this was great because it allowed them to get their books formatted quickly for a, a small price and it got their books looking at professional and then them came along and if authors didn't show a flexibility by adopting this a new tool then a formatting book so it would be a lot more expensive and it would take longer granted i do not use a them mainly because I just don't have a Mac and I have no intention of actually like, getting one, at least the, like, for the time being, but I will probably be switching formatting to InDesign because I, can, because I can do more with that. But if not, I will still stick to a KDP print template. I've been using that for about two and a quarter years now and then a draft digital for the ebook format. In fact, I almost probably still use that for my EPUBs, even with Adobe InDesign. So, and then I'll use InDesign for my covers, my print boxes, and also a special project that I'm planning, but I've now postponed <laughs> because of um, me getting my placement year. So overall though, the entire point of this section is to get you thinking, whenever you come across a new way of doing that something, take a step back and ask yourself, will this help me? Is this way better for me? Because sometimes it won't be, and that's okay. But sometimes it will be and it can help you a lot. So just because you've always done something a set way doesn't mean it can't be in approved. When something happens, stop, think, 
be flexible. Flexible. So this is what I really, really want to talk about in uh, this uh, podcast episode because as I write and record this in uh, July of 2021 towards uh, the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this is what we need to focus on. I'm laughing because of um, in your because if you're in the UK, then you understand why I'm laughing at that. The end of the pandemic. <laughs> I really hope so. I doubt it, though. When the pandemic first hit in March of 2020 and the entire world panicked and then businesses scrambled to try or to try and understand what this meant for them. For them though, because when the pandemic started, they were like the businesses had to stop and evaluate what they were doing and see like what projects needed to be cut to increase the chances of them surviving the pandemic. Of course, at the time, everyone thought the pandemic would only be for a few months. Sixteen months later, <laughs> so in a moment, I'm going to go through a real life example. Well, example though, but at the time, so this was be yes, like I'm talking about March 2020. At the time, CGD Publishing, which is my company, even though it's not a legal company yet, in a few years, hopefully. So to be honest, though, CGD Publishing, we could not do anything because it was small and I'd only been doing indie publishing a year from, from at that point. So there was just nothing to do. Businesses was, yeah, the business was nowhere near big enough to do anything <laughs> with it, though. If it happened now, I would have to do something, though, but... Yes, but back then, probably not. No, though, well, I didn't have to do anything, though. But if you want to learn more, I really do recommend episode 19, How to Plan Your Off Business During Uncertain Times. Well, that episode is really, really useful, and it does tie directly in to today's episode, though. However, there's another example that's uh, happening to me soon that applies to the exact same logic and processes that you would need to do if something happened that would, like, be it a major world event, a national event, for example, a yeah, global financial crash of a major national election so now we're going to go into my egg example example and i'm going to update this <laughs> it won't be updated on the blog post but it'll be updated to listeners though as i already said though so i found that my exam results yesterday meaning that whether i'm sort of getting a full-time job from the end of september to early june next year though we're like kind of con a uh, Dr. Knight psychology research though and the reason why I sort of need to stop and I think about this is simply because this will drastically reduce my writing time so I will definitely I will still definitely do writing though right? because to keep my sanity so like going back to the blog post though so like, if this did happen <laughs> which of course it did then this would mean that I would have to stop and think about my time and then I would have to cut projects down to the core, though. And I would have to be fairly conscious just about income, though, because my writing time decreased. So I'm not really sure how much my author income would decrease in 2022. Personally, just reflect on that. I'm, I'm pretty hopeful it won't decrease that much, if at all, because I've got so much in the pipeline. So hopefully I'll be fine. And I, that's the case, though. So as an author business, I write sci-fi fantasy, psychology and books I've provided. And I have two uh, podcasts. So broadly speaking, that's what I do. do that. So uh, immediately what I did was I cancelled projects. I sort of got all the future projects that I was doing. And I sort of, so, yes, and then I, what I did, I was like postponed, um, low priority, high priority, mid priority. And I did actually... So, and at the future projects that I did off the, off the top of my head, I postponed two, which was a epic fantasy series, and me creating my own magazine, which is what the special project here is. The owner magazine, which I'm sort of copying for like Dean Wesley Smith, I'm delaying that until June 2022, because by then I should have, I should have like done a enough books, hopefully though, but we just see like, the night of the reasons why I scrapped these projects is simply because of my writing time decreased. Then I would need to scrap these projects just to make a time for writing and creating more intellectual property. And then what I did was that I focused on what on on like what do I want to focus on for August and last September because my placement year starts in late September. So so I was only focused on creating enough content. So I have books to publish during a 2022 because I simply don't know what writing time I'm going to have during my placement though. And in the blog post, what I like I said that was was that I would still try and do a thousand words a day even though if I had no practical writing time. And I definitely am going to try and do that because the thousand words a day is not hard. And if I just try and do a thousand uh, well yes and if i just try and do a thousand words a day over time that will seriously start to add up even if it's a, a novella or something um a month that is still very very good 
Okay. And then in terms of like podcasting, that was like what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be creating lots of content before my placement starts, though, like, just so I can, can keep the podcast again, though, because the podcasting, it does take up a bit of a time, though. But with me batching a content, then that will help make it a lot more. So to summarize the example, though, so applying at the uh, being flexible in a business mindset. So if I, I get my placement, I will stop and to think about what needs to continue for me to survive this event. And I will cut projects and adapt them for the future. Because here's the thing, though, if I didn't adapt, I know I would be annoyed and disappointed at myself because I wouldn't be able to do everything that I wanted. And I probably wouldn't come out of this event unharmed, at least in terms of the business. So in terms of you and your author business, when something happens to you, you might want to take a step back and think about how about how you need to respond. Sometimes like me in March of 2020, you won't need to adapt. Lots of people won't. But other times, you and your author business will need to change and adapt to increase the likelihood of you surviving an event. I know this sounds scary, but it really isn't. It's a fun challenge of working in the publishing industry. And that's what I love about being an author, because you get to work in this amazing, changing industry that is really, really fun. So the main thing here, though, is just to have fun, keep learning and be flexible and you'll probably be okay. So I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you know someone who would find today's episode useful, then uh, please share it with them. I'm always really grateful when you wonderful people help us spread the word earlier about the podcast. And also, though, please check out uh, Turn Your Ideas Into Money, a, a guide to making money with your writing. Available from all major ebook retailers, and you can order the payback and hardback version from Amazon or, y- or your local bookstore. So, have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thanks uh, for listening today. I hope you found it useful. For more information, please go to theglobalauthor.com. And if you want to connect, then please reach out to me on Twitter at theglobalauthor. And you can find me on Facebook. For your free and exclusive Global Author video training, please go to theglobalauthor.com forward slash free. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.